Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome back. Have you ever considered that humanity's oldest dream of eternal life might be leaving the realm of myth and landing in a science lab? Something is happening right now at the intersection of artificial intelligence and biology that is set to redefine what it means to live and to die. By the end of this video, you will understand how our generation might witness the first humans to live for centuries. But first, we have to start in a very strange place. If you understand this, your perspective on the ticking clock of your own life will be changed forever. We all tend to think of aging as an inevitable one-way street, like a car where the parts just naturally wear out until the engine gives up. But what if that's not the whole story? What if aging isn't just a process, but a disease? And like any other disease, maybe it can be treated. For decades, drug discovery was like a sharpshooter, looking for a single silver bullet, a highly selective compound designed to hit just one molecular target to minimize side effects. But aging isn't a single target. It's more like a complex symphony of decline across countless biological pathways happening all at once. So how do you fight a war on a thousand different fronts simultaneously? The answer, it turns out, is with an entirely new kind of general, artificial intelligence. Instead of searching for that one silver bullet, AI is now helping scientists find compounds with a quality known as polypharmacology. Forget the lone sniper. Think of this as a special forces team designed to engage multiple targets at the same time, modulating diverse aging-related pathways for a far greater effect. But what are these targets? Scientists call them the hallmarks of aging, which are basically categories of cellular and molecular damage that accumulate over time. They're broken down into three stages. First, you have the primary hallmarks, which are the root causes of the damage. This includes things like genomic instability, damage to our DNA, and telomere attrition, where the protective caps on our chromosomes get shorter every time a cell divides. Think of these as the first cracks appearing in a building's foundation. But that's just the beginning. Next come the antagonistic hallmarks. Ironically, these are the body's protective responses to that initial damage. But over time, they start making things worse. This is where our cellular powerhouses, the mitochondria, start to fail. And it's where we meet the infamous senescent cells, often called zombie cells. These are damaged cells that refuse to die. They just hang around, secreting harmful substances that cause inflammation and damage their healthy neighbors. Finally, we have the integrative hallmarks, which are the cumulative result of everything that came before. This is the end game. Stem cell exhaustion sets in, meaning our body loses its ability to regenerate tissues, and our cells stop talking to each other properly. By understanding these specific stages, AI isn't just searching randomly, it's pinpointing exactly how and where to intervene in the aging process. So how does it do this? One of its most powerful tools is something called an aging clock. These are deep neural networks that analyze massive amounts of data, from our genes to blood biomarkers to MRI scans, to predict our biological age, which is often a more accurate measure of our health than our chronological age. It gives researchers an unprecedented ruler for measuring how fast we're aging. But beyond just analyzing data, generative AI is a true game changer. It can create entirely new synthetic biological data and even design novel drug compounds from scratch, exploring vast chemical possibilities at a speed that was once unimaginable. This all sounds amazing in theory, but is it producing any tangible results? The answer is a resounding yes. We're seeing the rise of geroprotectors, which are compounds aimed directly at slowing the aging process. For example, there's a class of drugs called senolytics, designed to selectively eliminate those zombie cells. And they aren't hypothetical. Drugs that already exist, like desatinib, are being repurposed for this, with over 20 clinical trials underway for conditions ranging from frailty to pulmonary fibrosis. Then you have nutrient-sensing modulators, like rapamycin, which works by mimicking the effects of caloric restriction, essentially delivering the benefits of eat less, live longer, in a pill. But perhaps the most stunning breakthrough has come from combination therapies. A recent study in mice combined two different drugs that target two different aging pathways. The result? An average 30% increase in lifespan. 30%. And it wasn't just a longer life, it was a healthier one with better organ function and fewer tumors. It suggests a multi-pronged attack on aging is the most effective strategy. And this brings us to the main event. All of this science is incredible for extending our health span, the years we spend in good health. But what about radical life extension? Living for centuries, maybe even indefinitely? 
This goes beyond just treating disease and starts to change the fundamental human experience. This is where the science fiction becomes a profound philosophical and societal question. Is living that much longer even something we'd truly want? One of the most prominent arguments against it is the boredom argument. Philosophers have argued that a profoundly longer life could lead to a sense of listlessness and a loss of meaning, that the finitude of life is what motivates us to make the most of our time. If life were endless, would we procrastinate forever? Of course, there are strong counter-arguments. Humans are incredibly adaptable. We can continuously find new interests and joys. But what about your identity? After 300 years of new experiences and changing desires, would you even be the same person? The science is racing ahead, but our entire social and economic fabric is built around a certain lifespan. How would society even begin to cope? The most immediate concern is access. Will this only be for the ultra-wealthy, creating a new, almost species-level divide between the haves and the have-longs? It could dramatically worsen existing inequalities, concentrating wealth and power in the hands of a few who can afford to live indefinitely. Our systems for retirement and social security are already strained. This would demand aggressive fixes. Could you imagine having to save for a 200-year retirement? And what about families? They could become incredibly elongated beanpole structures with many more generations coexisting. That could mean unparalleled time with loved ones, but it could also alter our fundamental family dynamics. And the biggest question of all, the environment. Could our finite planet possibly sustain a vastly increased, long-lived population? This all raises the crucial question of regulation. Right now, major bodies like the FDA don't even recognize aging itself as a disease, which complicates the approval process for anti-aging therapies. We are in a complex dance between scientific progress and societal responsibility. This deep dive has shown us a future where the line between science fiction and reality is blurring incredibly fast. We've seen the power of AI to unlock the secrets of aging and the real promise of new therapies. But we've also had to unpack the profound questions of what a radically extended life means for us as individuals and for our society. The drive for longevity is undeniable, and the potential benefits to our health are enormous. However, it's crystal clear that the path forward isn't just about cool technology. It demands careful ethical consideration and a steadfast commitment to equitable access. Thank you so much for joining me on this incredible journey. Your support means the world to us. You all are like family to us, and we truly love you guys. If this video gave you something to think about, please show your support with a like and subscribe for more deep dives into the future. And the next time you look in the mirror, just remember that the story of aging is being rewritten right now.